Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing in, in Latin America in Central and South America, um, basically in the tropics. And uh, I think we, you know, there's, there's a, a number of things that are a little different in the, in the tropics. And uh, we'll talk a bit about that when, when it comes to building tiny homes. Usually I'm talking about one of our communities. I'm not going to focus on that today, but I really encourage you to, if you are interested in, you know, freedom oriented, self-sustainability, living in tiny homes, really uh, check out some of our other webinars we've done with Zach and Jason. Um, you know, whether you want to live in it or you want to you know, potentially rent it out or whatever you'd like to do um, or live in it part time or vacation in it and rent it out. There's lots of things you can do with a tiny home in, in the tropics. So we'll go a little bit on about Eco Villages. That's our company. Um, we create what it says there, affordable, freedom-oriented, and sustainability-oriented communities throughout Latin America. Um, right now, we have communities in Belize, uh, Honduras, Nicaragua, and we're starting one and we're starting two new ones in Panama. And we've designed them in Salvador and Argentina and other areas as well. And we're continuing to expand into different regions with our what we call our Veritas Village communities, which are all focused around. Um, minimalistic living, but self-sustainability and getting away from uh, lots of rules and things and, you know, various governmental taxes and authoritarian regimes around the world. So that's kind of our, our bend. Um, the way we started is a, probably almost two decades ago now. Um, my son and I lived on a boat and in a sailboat and uh, in different boats in the, in, the, in the ocean in the Pacific Northwest, not too far from where Zach and Jason are up in Vancouver Island area. And, uh, you know, the, the history of, that's kind of how we got into the tiny home living. There's probably nothing more efficient than, you know, especially if you ask boat designers than a boat in terms of cramming everything that you need in life into a small space. And, uh, and in addition to that, it's really a self-sustaining kind of lifestyle, especially if you're living out on the ocean, you, you don't get a long extension cord out to produce power. So you're Using solar, wind, or tidal power to create, you know, energy for the for what you're doing, um, whether it's you know heating, cooling, cooking, that sort of thing. Um, you know, creating potable water out of salt water, so desalination out on the ocean. And we tried to live as much sustainable uh, lifestyle on the ocean as well, on the ocean and in the Gulf and San Juan Islands in that area. And it, it was a really just a hugely enjoyable lifestyle. And you know, we. We pick up oysters, catch rock cod and salmon, and and um, you know eat sea asparagus. We'd find wild crab apples on the on the islands and things like that. It's just a very cool thing, and we wanted to kind of bring that lifestyle uh, where you're more self sustainable, um, don't need a big space, and and bring that to land after we'd lived on uh, in a boat for a couple of years, and uh, we chose the. You know, Central America, the tropics in this area, because it's just for many reasons, it's a lot easier to do with you get a lot more, you know, solar and um, a power, solar energy in this region, uh, just because of the, you know, um, proximity to the equator, a lot more sunshine. Uh, you know, obviously living in the Vancouver Island area, it's like Seattle, you get half the year is pretty cloudy. So, you know, our systems are a lot simpler down here, a lot smaller to generate a lot more power and all those things, obviously having the nice weather and, and everything. So we took the ideas of living on a boat and started um, designing small homes, tiny homes for our communities. We do all sorts of size homes up to big mansions, mid-sized homes, condominiums, but we we really brought um, the tiny home concept for the most part to this region and especially in Central America. And so one of the, you know, there's a lot of reasons I try to pack it into a small presentation here today. Zach and Jason know I can ramble about this stuff for a long time. So I'll try to get, get through. We made a pretty short presentation, but obviously things like the weather, you know, it seems obvious. It's nice to have this kind of weather, but what that does is it really makes the outdoor space all year round your living space. Um, you know, I, like I said, I just stayed in the, in the Rocky Mountains in Canada. Uh, in a in a tiny home cabin, and it was very cool, <laughs> literally I guess very cold too. But um, you know, half the year at least you're kind of you're stuck indoors. Where in the climates down here, you know, we you don't need any great rooms or big dining rooms or whatever. I mean, I like to even just sit and watch football on the weekends or whatever, and I do it outside with you know TV or projector outside and 
on a tiny home deck. And you don't really need all that space. You're really using, you know, it's similar for every tiny home, but in this lo location, you, you know, you're really only using your bedroom, your kitchen, kitchen and your bathroom and everything else is your life outdoors. And that's really, you know, it's, it's good for your lifestyle too. It's good, great for stress relief and peace of mind. But, you know, when you can do that year round and you don't have to worry about the extremes and temperatures, I mean, Panama is a pretty extreme right now where I am um, today. Uh, like I said, it's about 34, 35 degrees Celsius. So that's a bit extreme to be hanging out outside. But this evening, it'll be nice in the, in the mid 20s. And, and so, you know, you spend a lot more time outdoors. And you also have the relaxed reg regulations. One, one of the things I really like about what we're able to do, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, is, you know, we don't have to worry about having things on wheels. We, you know, our homes on wheels, we, we create real foundations, real, real homes, and they're, you know, generally ICF or insulated concrete forms and, and you know, concrete and steel homes. And people ask me, well, is that eco-friendly? And it's like, absolutely, because these homes will last probably a thousand years without maintenance. And it um, doesn't get much more eco-friendly than that. So we'll talk about a few of these different things. So, you know, obviously a lot of restrictions are in North America, Canada, US. I'm Canadian originally, but we looked at doing a lot of these communities um, in the US and Canada and Europe. And not only do you have to jump through a million hoops in terms of environmental regulations and all sorts of things, which, you know, you'd think with a company called Eco Villages, we would, we would do pretty good at that. But it's still, you know, it, even when we wanted to, to create a, our first community in, in, in the US, the restrictions in the state that we were looking at still required us to make them on wheels. And we didn't want to restrict it to being a, you know, width of a roadway and those sorts of things. So we, we're able to do much more unique designs because uh, we basically can make our homes any shape we want. They're are on a real foundation. Uh, there's no restriction to lot sizes for the most part in these countries down here. So, you know, your lot can, or your home could, if you really wanted a very tiny, tiny lot, you could put your home and basically be the footprint of your lot. Um, in our communities, we create large lots because of the sustainability part. People want their own orchards and gardens as well as, you know, we have community orchards and gardens. But the, the beauty is that we can, we can get creative. And you'll see, if you look on our website, you'll see a lot of different designs. We have over the, you know, designed over the water communities, kind of like the Tahiti style ones in, in Belize. Um, you know, we've got on the beach, a lot of homes on, the, on beautiful sand beaches in the Caribbean and in the Pacific. So if you're a diver or a surfer, they're really cool places to, to live or, or rent your home out. And so we can do, you know, specific to, you know, making, you know, something that's oriented towards a surfer with, you know, surf, surfboard storage and, you know, access in the home with wide spaces and things like that, and still stay within what is typically a, a tiny home square footage. I mentioned the beautiful weather, obviously. Uh, this is a shot at one of our new communities that we're just starting to get the permitting on here in Panama. It's in the, in what we call the Highlands. Uh, one of the things in the tropics is, yeah, it's always warm, but if you're down by the beach, it's sometimes too warm and and too much salt spray for growing a lot of things. So we we found this beautiful property that's a thousand feet elevation overlooking the ocean, and so you have amazing views. But you can also grow anything there because at that elevation, you're 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 you know at the right temperature year round, um, and it, it's it's you know in the, in Celsius mid twenties kind of year round. And you know what? That's mid seventies to mid eighties, and you can grow anything. And it's, you know, it, so it, it really is not just great for people. It's great for animals. It's great for vegetation, and you know everybody loves that temperature. And it it's just you know amazing. And then we're only ten minutes away or twenty minutes away from various beaches that are on the Pacific here, and it's it's just an amazing area. So again, you know, when it comes to construction, you can build a lot more outdoor spaces. Because, you know, you're going to spend a lot more time outdoors than you would in a climate where you've got half the winter is rain or half the or half the year is cold or whatever it is. And again, I mentioned few regular, fewer regulations. You know, you when we looked at um, communities in North America or Europe, for instance, you had a lot of restrictions on the number of buildings you could have on, on a property. There was so much permitting for each one of them. You know, if you had one of a certain size, you had to. You have minimum sizes of homes and that a lot of those regulations go away in this part of the world 
and you, you know you can you can build your tiny home a lot of our clients and residents will build a tiny home for them to live in and another one for guests family and friends or rent out you know for people to stay so that's not a problem you could put you know if you if you have a half acre acre two acres of property you can put as many tiny homes on it as you want generally i mean the, the, each country has a little bit different rules but they're all very flexible so it really gives you a lot of opportunity to to do what you want to do and and not be bogged down by the regulations that you'll find typically up north and as i mentioned too we we're also um because we're not forced to put our homes on wheels we're not forced to use any particular type of building methodology we can choose what we believe in um in in the case uh, in our case we're using icf which is insulated concrete forms so basically you have an insulation layer in the middle and we pour the concrete in one in one pour so the entire tiny home is like one solid concrete box and you know that makes it resistant to everything you know if if we're on the caribbean side we have to you know at least the northern caribbean uh, we have to be concerned with the occasional hurricanes and storms that tropical storms that run through but these homes resist that with no problem at all. Um, they're also built to uh, California earthquake code, so we don't have to worry about the seismic issues. And it's like, I always talk about like, in a, you know, we get earthquakes on the West Coast, whether it's in Alaska or British Columbia or Oregon or down the coast down to here in Panama as well. <clears throat> and I always want to build the homes like, like it's a box on the beach, right? And it, it moves, when, if the sand starts moving, the box is moving along as one piece. If, if you don't build it correctly and with the wrong footings and everything you get, you know, the walls are doing this and that's when you get cracks or collapses. So the, the way we build these homes are extremely strong. Like I said, they'll last for hundreds, if not thousands of years, you know, and uh, people many generations from now will still be able to, to use the homes that we're building today. As I mentioned earlier too, that, you know, one of the beauties of what well, I did a lot of work, you know, dating myself and my age here, but I did a lot of playing around with solar systems and wind systems, more or less when they were first coming out in the 90s, 80s and 90s. And uh, things have changed remarkably and for the better recently, especially in in battery technology. So we're light years ahead, no pun intended, of, of where we were back then. And when I was you know, living up in, in the Vancouver area in Canada and Victoria, Vancouver Island and living on a boat, you needed so many panels to power things, partly because, you know, the technology was further behind, but also mostly because it was either gray and cloudy outside or just you didn't have the same solar power that you have generated near the equator here. So when we came down here and decided we we're going to build these communities, we literally chose this region for one of the, this was one of the big reasons why we did that and it allows us to you know build off-grid homes um, our Ver, our veritas village here in panama our welcome center is you know three bedroom home it's not a tiny home but it's it's where everybody gathers to have a glass of wine and watch the sunset or whatever look over the ocean and uh, have dip in the pool but it's 100 percent off-grid and you know we have our own water well there our own biodigester uh, septic treatment system and so there and we even have uh, Elon Musk's uh, what's it called SpaceX internet so we have high speed internet and it's you know kind of a nice remote community it's 10-15 minutes away from a small town or or big town small city so you have all the conveniences but you know you're kind of remote away from it and you but you've got all the comfort and you don't have any power bills or any water bills or anything so it's it's a very cool and we're able to do that very easily down here because we're, you know, we're on an area that's on top of a, a great mountain spring aquifer to have amazing water. Back when we had the water tested there said, well, you should, you should bottle this. It's, it's perfect alkalinity and everything. So you got that, you know, the water, we can generate our own power with the breezes through the wind power or the solar system and treat our own um, sewer septic. And basically we're just hundred percent off grid and it's very easy to do. So whether you would move into one of our communities, which of course we'd love you to do, or you build your own home, own home or hire somebody to build a home down here, it's just, you know, it's a great location for, for having the tiny homes. And we do a lot of gray water recycling and all that sort of stuff too. And, uh, you know, where we, we separate the septic water from, 
you know, the water that's coming from your sinks and shower. And we reuse the, the gray water for watering your, you know, your lawn. In this, in this climate down here, we have, they call it winter and summer. I, I, I tell my wife who's from Ecuador, you can't really call it winter because it's not cold. Winter just means it's going to rain a bit. But the summer is very dry. We have two distinct seasons, especially on the Pacific side of, of Latin America, where you have uh, half the year is, is very dry and the other half has a, certain, you know, a decent amount of rain. And, but in the dry season, it's nice to have that water recycling, the gray water recycling to you know, keep your gardens healthy and everything, your flower beds and all that sort of stuff. So that's kind of a nice perk. You know that your shower water, for instance, is not being wasted or you're washing clothes and those sorts of things. So, you know, in our communities that we, we talk a lot about freedom, it's not specific to the tiny homes, but just want to mention that, you know, we, we, we really are creating these communities. And like I said, if you, you know, want to live in one of our communities, that would be great. You get community orchards and gardens. You get kind of like-minded neighbors who really feel strong about, you know, you know minimal living and, and um, having a great lifestyle, a lot, a lot more stress-free. Uh, what I find is like I go out to our Veritas community, for instance, and I just sit there and I realize, you know, if I lived here full time, it would basically be free because, like I said, we're creating our own water, we're creating our own energy, we're dealing with, you know, other than our Internet connection, it's really the only thing that we're paying for. It really takes a lot of stress off your life. It, you know, you, once you have your home and your property, the property taxes down here are so minimal. And, uh, you know, it, it really is. One of the freedoms I like to talk to talk about is just, you know, kind of the mental freedom and a lack of stress. And so financial stress is almost everybody's number one stress in life. So that really, you know, having a small home, obviously less maintenance, less room to take care of, less to worry about. You know, you can spend a lot more of your time outdoors so you feel better. And, you know, and if you have a self-sustainable gardens and orchards and everything grows down here year round, you don't have to worry about. You know, I, you know, I, if, a, if you're a Nordic person or my, my, I have a Germanic background, our, our thinking is we got to grow everything in summer and save it through the winter. Well, you don't have to do that down here. It's a much more relaxed lifestyle in general because people really know that they can grow things all year round. If I want bananas or mangoes, or papaya or whatever it is, or growing corn or, you know, other peas or carrots, whatever, I can just do that year round. So it's a little bit outside of the tiny home, but it's another reason why you might want to consider having your tiny home in, in Latin America. And if you're, you know, we, we sell a lot of our homes to uh, digital nomads, right? So people that are able to work from home, um, suddenly, you know, COVID taught that to a lot of people, right? Before that, we had a lot of digital nomads. After COVID, we had enormous numbers of digital nomads coming down and living in this region uh, we estimate about a 30 times, like 3,000% increase in the number of people working from home, because once they realized they could work from home, they realized they didn't necessarily have to live, you know, in Detroit or wherever it is. They could live in a beachfront home in Nicaragua, very inexpensively, and it's a beautiful place to be, and, or on the Caribbean side, of, you know, in Honduras or in Belize or wherever. So... You know that the freedom of that too, and you can get your work done when you want, and you're, you're just as digitally connected as you need to be. And so it's it's a really great lifestyle, and and my wife and I just really enjoy the ability. We have a home kind of in each one of our communities. We're lucky that way, and so we can you know we we find a lot of people doing that too. They'll have a tiny home at the reef, for instance, is our community out, looking out at Roatan um, on the Caribbean side, right on the beach. Or, and then have one in Playa Pacifica, which is our community in Nicaragua on the beach. Um, so that's a Pacific side. And then um, maybe one in the highlands here in Panama and, and spend four months in each and just keep when they're not in one or, the, or two, they'll they'll uh, rent it out and it, it pays for them living in the other one. So it, it's, a, again, a very stressful, freedom oriented lifestyle. So I guess I went through all that in the last slide, but why build in the tropics? You know, kind of the recap is there's fewer to no regulations um, on, on the home size or even lot size. And there's, you know, you don't need to build on wheels. You can have a in proper footings, concrete and steel foundation. Homes are made out of concrete. Uh, like I said, they're, they're going to be around for a long time. They're very low maintenance. 
you can get really flexible on the designs. You know, uh, like the one in the picture here is one that we designed for both the Panama and uh, El Salvador community, where you can kind of have that big garage door, glass garage door type of opening in the front and open it and just enjoy the, the weather that you have year round in your in your home. So you can do creative things like that. Don't have to worry about, you know, it getting cold and, and having to deal with that. It's a much lower cost of living, you know, whether that's just the general, you know, property tax or anything, but it's also, you know, even if you're not growing your own food and you go shopping at one of the, you know, open air markets down here, which I love to do, the prices are so low, you know, my wife and I would I would like to go, you know, for instance, in Nicaragua, we go to a market in San Rafael del Sur, which is a little town near near where um, our community is. And you can get kind of like a burlap sack that's up to your hip, you know, full of vegetables and fruit for under under ten dollars for sure in the last few weeks. And uh, so it, it's very low cost of living, which is, you know, kind of nice too. It allows you to kind of save up for something else other than just survival. And obviously you have the beautiful weather. You know, it's funny because I'm Canadian originally and I still, even after a couple of decades of being down here, I find myself looking for my jacket before I go outside and I realize I don't have a jacket. So I don't really need one. But now that I've spent the last couple of weeks of Christmas and New Year's in Canada, I'm having that feeling again. It's like, oh, I got to put my boots on and jacket. And it's like, oh, no, I don't. I'm just going to go outside in my t-shirt like I always do. But it really gives you, again, to the freedom to, to be more self-sufficient, grow your own food, all the sorts of things that kind of overlaps on the Venn diagram between minimalist, tiny home living and self-sustainability. So we're huge fans of, of having tiny homes in this region. Uh, we've done a lot of webinars, you know, together with Zach and Jason and some on our own and different ones that, you know, you're welcome to go to our website. It's www.ecovillages.life. Um, or send an email to tinyhouse at ecovillages-life.com and we'll be happy to respond to you, answer any of your questions. And if you check out our website, you'll see the different communities we have and, and everything that's going on at, at those and the up and coming ones. We've got some big news as a company going to be announcing in the next month or so. And we're going to be expanding into to more countries, Costa Rica, Mexico, um, Argentina really excited about Argentina. I kind of want to have the vineyard oriented community there. Spent a lot of time around Mendoza looking for property that we're going to be, you know, creating community out of at some point as well. So lots of things on the go. Um, happy to answer questions, you know, after 20 years of the school of hard knocks. And like I always like to say, I kind of paid my tuition in building tiny homes and, and big homes in this region. Uh, I encourage you to reach out to us and, and ask us about, you know, things if you're if you're wondering about them, we're always happy. I would have loved to have somebody with, you know, a couple decades of experience of doing this. When I first came down here many years ago and, and uh, had somebody to ask and, you know, we, whether you end up in one of our communities, of course, we'd love that. But if you don't, that's fine, too. We're just trying to help the tiny home movement in, in Latin America, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. It was pretty short, but I, I have a limited amount of time. And I like I said, I tend to ramble. So I think I actually made this one in under the amount of time I'm allowed. And there's lots more information out there for anybody that's interested. So Zach, Jason, that's kind of, that's it for me. I don't know if I have to allow you guys back in now or. <laughs> no, we, we should be good. I just had to find the right screen, so. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Patrick. We really appreciate you uh, sharing what you guys are up to down there. It's super cool. And uh, you guys are obviously doing so many different communities. There's a lot to offer, different countries, different locations, and everything like that. So it's always fun to hear what you guys are up to and, and whatnot. So yeah, very exciting. And I can't wait to hear more about the Argentina one as well. It sounds like it's going to be a beautiful place down there. So yeah, we've got lots on the go. So we'll uh, hope, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys down here in the next few months too. So yeah, definitely. That'll be a lot of fun. So we're hoping to make it down. It'd be really fun. Good, good. Well, yeah, thanks for uh, being punctual and understanding the, the time constraints and whatnot, but you do have a couple more minutes. If you want to answer any more questions, there's a couple questions in the Q and a, if you want, um, I can read them off to you or whatever you'd like. 
Uh, yeah, sorry, I put my glasses on here so I can read them to a small <laughs> screen in front of me. Um, Barb is asking, how easy it to, is it to get construction materials and labor, especially skilled trades in Panama? Mm -hmm. uh, materials and labor is easy, and especially in Panama, because we have the canal here. Um, materials are most of the materials for this area come through Panama, uh, are shipped into Panama and then trucked off to other areas. So it, it's one of the beauties of Panama. It's, it's pretty easy to get materials. And there's lots of people that are looking for labor. Um, skill is, you know, something you really need experience with. And I would, I would really encourage people to talk to us about things like if you, it's not like building in North America. It's not like building in Europe, or Australia, or anywhere else. Uh, that's kind of first world. Um, there, it's it's a totally different thing. I won't get into it, but it's very easy to get things wrong and you'd like to see it, you know, people enjoy their lives down here and not get frustrated. So there's a lot of, you know, little tips and tricks that we're happy to, to, to help you out with. And especially, in fact, most of all of our communities right now, we require that we're the construction company because not like we're trying to hoard that or, or control freaks. We just want to make sure that the home is built really well and our, you know, our clients get exactly what they're expecting. Do these homes you build appreciate and value? What about, oh, this is from Sylvia. What about home equity? I heard generally uh, depreciate over time. Actually, our homes appreciate, you know, I can't promise that it will continue, but we've had a lot of capital gains appreciation in our homes. Uh, we tend to uh, build our communities in phases, and, and most of the people that get in early in the phases especially see, um, you know, pretty radical <laughs> capital gains appreciation. So people, we do get a certain percentage of people that will uh, buy into our communities, um, A, because they're really affordable, you know, somewhere around $100,000 and up, you can you can have a home and that gives you titled land and everything in, included. And, um, you know, it's much less expensive than most places in the world. And, uh, you know, as the phases build out and we add more, the prices always go up and, you know, people become more interested as the communities grow. And, you know, people see, you know, pretty, we, we have pro formas and we'll show you um, if you're interested, you can send us a message and, and we can send you for the different communities based on actuals, like the experience we've had on rentals in terms of what they tend to return on rental income and also on capital gains. So, you know, well, I, I haven't seen any depreciation yet. I mean, if you build a multi-million dollar home, um, in this region, there's not a huge market for that. So yeah, you might have to, if you're desperate to sell it, you might have to sell it for less than you built it for, but that doesn't happen with, with tiny homes or, or 10 no, won't happen with other homes as well. Um, I don't see another question. So, um, cool, cool. Well, yeah, thanks Pat for, uh, running through those real quick and, uh, really appreciate your time. Super excited about everything you guys got going on and, uh, yeah, thanks so much for jumping on here today. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. And I will try to stop sharing here now. Okay, perfect. And I will jump off and we'll talk to you again soon and enjoy the rest of your conference. Awesome. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you later.